Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Mike Tyson. We spoke about him. You know where I'm going. You know yeah. where I'm going. Um, Mike Tyson. Now, a hero of mine growing up when I was a kid, when I was in the boxing gyms as a, as a young kid trying to, trying to be a boxer, um, he's fighting at 58 years old against Jake Paul. Now, I don't know what you've heard. Have you heard anything, Dan, in reference to it being an exhibition, the size of the gloves, how many rounds? But if you haven't heard anything like that, just give me your initial thoughts when you saw that sort of head-to-head and that fight poster. I mean, I was surprised at the moment I saw it just because it was being announced. But in the long run, I wasn't shocked because that seemed like that was the logical, if you're going to continue down the path of making these these types of crossover celebrity whatever, however you want to determine, you know, call it. What what would be bigger than Mike Tyson against Jake Paul at this point? And if you go back to 2020, when Mike had the exhibition match against Roy Jones, which did a huge amount of pay-per-view business, you know, mainly because it was, uh, you know, two legendary names and also it didn't hurt the, the sales because, you know, here in America, we're all in a pandemic and everything is closed and no one's going anywhere. You can't, you know, do anything. Everybody was at home. Everybody bought the fight. In fact, when they fought the fight in Los Angeles, there was nobody in the arena because they weren't allowed to have a crowd. But on that undercard, you had Jake Paul in his second professional fight scoring a spectacular knockout where the, the clip of the video of that knockout against Nate Robinson, the former NBA player, was everywhere, viral on the internet, just a sick knockout. Though to think that they're here now four years later as Jake has made a bigger name for himself in boxing, had some more significant fights against uh, you know, former MMA fighters, but also actual boxing matches against Tommy Fury and the last couple of opponents that he has had. And Tyson is still the most famous boxer who ever lived in the history of the sport, other than maybe Muhammad Ali. Uh, I can't say I'm totally shocked. I asked, what is the ruling going to be in terms of gloves and ring and real fight, exhibition fight, headgear, et cetera, rounds? Well, when, when MVP uh, and Netflix announced this event, they did not announce any of that stuff. I reached out to the PR team. I reached out to Nikisa Bedarian, who is the, the partner of Jake Call and his promotion company that you know runs most of the business side of things and asked those questions. And they didn't, the PR team still hasn't responded even nicely to say, you know, we don't want to talk about it, whatever. Uh, Nikisa and I uh, had a text exchange and they're not ready to put that out yet. That, what that tells me is either A, it's not decided or B, they just don't want to talk about it just yet. But I made my phone calls to the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, which is the folks that will oversee the event because they handle all combat events in the state of Texas, where I've covered many fights and know people that work for that agency. And I called up one of the guys I know there and I was like, hey, what's the deal with this thing? And uh, he said to me, you know, that he knew about the Jake Paul Tyson match only because he had seen it in the media. But in terms of anything official, the only thing that had been done was MVP had put in a date request with the department to secure the dates to hold a boxing event at the AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, which is right outside of Dallas. Uh, a huge stadium. It's where Canelo Alvarez fought Billy Joe Saunders, and they set the all-time American attendance indoor okay. record when they had their unification fight. Over 76,000 people was mm-hmm. a wild scene being down there for that as the pandemic was uh, finally subsiding. So they don't have any knowledge in terms of anything official that that's the match they're asking for. And so what does that tell you? That tells you that there has been no effort, at least officially, in Texas for Tyson to get a boxing license, which would lead you to believe that it probably would be an exhibition unless they try to go forward to, at this point, get him licensed. Now, one thing to remember, and again, this was said to me by this person involved in that agency, is that in the state of Texas, the promoter of the boxing event or an MMA event or whatever it is, doesn't have to let the commission know uh, up until at least 21 days ahead of time what their proposed fights are. So mm-hmm. they have plenty of time to go through the process. But it just it just feels like it would be hard for me to see them do a real fight between a soon-to-be 58-year-old Iron Mike Tyson and a prime, physically strong young man, 27 years old, Jake Paul. Uh, you know, Tyson, people remember him when he was great in the, in the late, you know, in the mid to late 80s when he was the king of the world and he was knocking everybody out and he became you know, what he became. The Tyson I remember besides that Tyson is the Tyson I covered in the early days of my professional boxing writing career of covering his fights near the end of his career and watching him quit and watching it knock the fuck out and and basically performing the way an old, you know, unmotivated shot fighter would perform. 
That's the Tyson I remember. And when you are that age back in 2005, 2004, 2003, whatever, it's not going to get better with age. Now, as a 57-year-old going on 58, Mike is obviously in superb condition. And you can watch the little 10-second clips they put out of him hitting miss on, on the videos that they put on social media. And I'm, I'm glad for Mike that he's doing well and he's in, in uh, that kind of frame of mind. But there's a big difference between having a 15 or 20 second video clip on Twitter compared to actually being in a boxing ring for three minutes and having a 27 year old strong man with a big right hand coming at you, trying to knock you out mm. and, and you're gassed after a minute. So I, again, I'm, I'm not hating on the event. I'm sort of intrigued by the event. I'm going to probably go to Texas to cover the event, but I believe it's going to wind up being an exhibition fight. I just cannot wrap my mind around the fact that Texas is going to regulate this as an actual official boxing match that would go on the records of these two men. They wouldn't allow it on the records when Roy Jones and Mike fought, and they were both in the same age group. Mm -hmm. That was an exhibition match. So we'll see what they do. I'm thrilled that Netflix is involved, though, because that's a huge platform. Everybody's going to watch this. I mean, we had television programs in the mainstream that were talking about the fight over the weekend when it was made. Um, and so it's going to be uh, a popular event. It's not pay-per-view. If you have Netflix, which millions and millions of people have, you just call it up and watch it the same you'd watch, you know, whatever your favorite show is on Netflix. So that's a benefit. And there's going to be, I'm assuming, undercard fights. So the, the the guys and gals that fight on that show will get some exposure on a massive platform. So, you know, it's okay. But uh, I just don't see it being a real fight, Andrew. Wall Street memes casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.